If I'm muted, I guess I'm good or not. You really? Okay. Happy to hear it. So what do we have? So Rabbi Yossi said. We are, we are on the same of okay, so he said that this is not um, Erchatz. Seems like he said that Erchatz is not included in the Midrash Yinam Nefesh. It's not, it's not included in um, what's considered Yinam Nefesh. Her husband has the, has the right, according to the Torah, to annul any vow of his wife that relates either to Yinam Nefesh, that's how we started at, or now in Mishnah. Something which really afflicts her, or things that are they know the vena, or they know the vena that interfere with their marital relationship. So that's in his domain. We have a focus of some sort in the Mishnah between the Tanakama and the Biosi as uh, to uh, whether certain Hidarim qualify as Enoi Nefesh or don't qualify as Enoi Nefesh. So it seems like Erchatz falls into that category. That's what we're up to here in Erchatz. Um, so we were trying to figure out the, the, the nature of this particular net. There's a Hedi Kamar. What are we talking about? Ilema, thank you very much. The Amma, Konam Peris Olam Alai Merchatz. If uh, she simply says, I'm going to prohibit uh, myself from being able to eat uh, any fruit um, uh, of the world, that's the Inoi Nefesh, if I wash. So, Lama La Hafara, why is there a need for Hafara at all? You can argue that Lo so let her not wash. If you assume that wa washing itself will not be um, Inoi Nefesh, so let her not wash. Well, let's have unfair solemn. And then she's not going to be prohibited in the eating uh, any of the peros. So uh, well, kind of are, are we talking about this being not filmed? No, we're just talking about washing, like cleanliness washing. Mm -hmm. And also, the hard lemon of Biosi in Edun in Nidre Inoi Nefesh, Dilma Rachsa, Vitsu, Peros, Olam Allah. How could also, how could Rabbi Yossi say that these are not Inoi Nefesh when? It really could lead to Enoi Nefesh, meaning why is that? But shouldn't we be worried that she's going to wash? And if she washes, then she's going to be prohibited from eating any of the peros. Rather, we have to say the case is like this. So she says that um, I'm not going to be uh, ever able to wash uh, if, uh, ever if I wash, uh, if I wash now. Um, this is the reason why, at least according to the Tanakhama, it would be, uh, we say that he should be made for the husband, it can be made for the nether. Um, because according to the Tanakhama, not washing is Dvarim Shal Inoi Nefesh. So the Hechi Tavi Tirchatz, if she's going to wash, then she's never going to be allowed to wash again. Mitzvah Hanas Allah. And if she doesn't wash, then Isla uh, Nigula, then at least according to the Tanakama, there would be a Enoi Nefesh for her not to, um, uh, not to wash. Um, so uh, even though uh, the first um, uh, washing um, would, be, um, uh, would be permitted to her according to the, um, according to the Tanakama, because that's not uh, the ultimate nether, Nonetheless, uh, they say that uh, because of the uh, anticipation uh, that she may wash and therefore the nether is going to become chaos, the Kiddush of the Tanakam, as the Ron explains, is that the husband will be able to be made fair from the very, very beginning, even though the actual nether part, as opposed to the Tanai part, is only going to kick in once she washes once. once. Okay, so by Rabbi Yossi Sava, on the other hand, Rabbi Yossi's opinion is that Evsha Delovachza, um, that she could go without uh, washing, and um, even if she as a, and even if she never uh, washes, uh, or, because let's say that she would wash, and uh, then the nether is going to kick in because the tonight would have kicked in, and as a result, uh, she'll never be able to wash herself or, uh, ever again. Uh, nonetheless, the nivo lo chashinan. We're not worried about that because, as the Ron points out. The Svira Leda Rabbi Yossi, the Barachisa Leola, Leka Inoi Nefesh, because Rabbi Yossi is of the opinion, since he says in the Mishnah that Nidre Inoi Nefesh, it's not considered to be, uh, uh, it's not considered to be Inoi Nefesh. So, Iyahachi, if that's the case, um, uh, then uh, shouldn't we have a different formulation? 
in the, the um, uh, in the Mishnah. Uh, so um, shouldn't we say uh, that uh, since here we're talking about a case where there was a Tanai that would first have to be fulfilled in order to, to, uh, to based on her formulation, in order to trigger the nether eno nefesh, yachi litni hachi. So then really the formulation and the mission of what Rabbi Yossi said should have been, uh, Rabbi Yossi Omer tenaize, that the tenai itself, it doesn't, um, it doesn't uh, implicate uh, the eno nefesh concerns. Tenaize, embo eno um, nefesh. Um, uh, so because um, as we said, uh, that according to Rabbi Yossi, there wouldn't be a problem, even if the nether itself was uh, that she uh, would not be able to do something, which definitely is the uh, Enoi Nefesh, like not being able to eat the Paris Olam, he doesn't care because she can keep the Tanai, the Tanai doesn't, re, uh, doesn't re, um, involve a violation of Enoi Nefesh because he doesn't consider a lack of washing to be Enoi Nefesh. So he should have said, Tanai is the aim of Enoi Nefesh. Ela de Amma, Rather, the formulation in the Mishnah must be a different formulation. It would go like uh, it would go like this: um, that the Amma Hanas Vechitza Alai Liolam, where she says that I'm going to prohibit myself from ever washing Erchatz Hayom if I wash on this day. That uh, the reason Rabbi Yossi is not concerned is because Rabbi Yossi holds that, that to go one day without washing. Um, is not considered to be a nibble. I mean, that's uh, we do that. People do that all the time. They're, they're, they're tired. They run down. Say, okay, I'll take a shower tomorrow night. Right? Rabbi Yossi, that's not considered to be enoy nefesh. So therefore, he's not worried. Really, what he's not worried about is the tonight itself. Rabbi Yossi sub a nibble the chayyom alosh me nibble. The Rabbi Yossi is of the opinion that nibble of one day is not considered to be a uh, nibble. Um, and shenis um, imerchatz. Um, um, uh, but uh, the imlo uh, elchatz uh, hechidami. Uh, okay, but what about the second uh, the second case? What about uh, the uh, case of im um, elchatz? So fine. So he holds the niva de chayomba lo shmei niva. Fine. So let's move. Uh, so let's move on here. Um, uh, now, as far as uh, the uh, fact that he said. Olam. If I'm going to um, if I'm going to wash, um, so we had the, well, the first case. The first case is im um, im erchatz. What about the second case in the Mishnah? The second case in the Mishnah is im lo erchatz. So how are we going to touch up the case of im lo erchatz? One case was im erchatz. The second case was im lo erchatz. Right? Okay. So im lo erchatz hechi dami. Sheni im erchatz im lo erchatz hechi dami. So Ilema, the Amma, so if we say that the case here is the Amma Titzer Hanas Rukhisa the Olam Alai, that she says that I'm going to prohibit washing forever, im lo sayom, if I don't uh, wash today, um so Lama So this is very easy um, because the Tanai only says only sets in in the event that she doesn't wash it. So the natural thing for a person to do is to wash anyway. So here, nobody should require any kind of uh, uh, hafara. Just let her wash. If he, if she washes, so then we're not going to even have the inoy nefesh of the second part of the tonight's uh, set in. Let her wash. Period. So Amr of Yehuda, so Rav Yehuda said no. In this case it goes as follows: The Amr Hanas Rechisa Alai the Olam that she says uh, that I'm going to prohibit washing uh, upon myself forever, which we know is inoy nefesh, at least according to the shita of the Tanakama, in lo echatz, if I don't wash today in really filthy water, in really filthy water, the main mishra, you know, the kind of water where you soak the flax in the water and it's all yucky and disgusting and putrid, okay? So that's the idea. So that's why the Tanai itself would implicate inoy nefesh concerns. The Kavase, where we can also say a similar explanation for the Tanai of Imlo Iskashe, this Tani Imlo Iskashe, when she said, if I'm not going to adorn myself, so she meant Imlo Iskashe Beneft, if I'm not going to adorn myself in petroleum, if you adorn yourself in petroleum, so you're not going to smell so good. So we say, first of all, how can you say that's the explanation then of Imlo Iskashe? That's not a Lashon of Iskashe. If you're going to 
Um, uh, if you're going to rub your entire body with petroleum, that's not kishu, that's lichluchu, that's, uh, that's uh, lachluchis, uh, that's making yourself uh, dirty. So I'm Rabbi Yehuda, no. Um, the, the, uh, the, the formulation then really what we're talking about is like this. The Amma, Hanas v'chisa liolam alai, but she says, I'm not going to be able to get the, the enjoyment of ever washing. If I wash today, and then she adds to it a little bit more. And I'm also taking the Shavua that I'm not going to wash. So that's the Erchatz, the Mlo Erchatz, the Im Erchatz is going on the first part of the Tanai. The Mlo Erchatz is going on the Shavua. And she's also adding to it, she's for good measure, she's throwing in a Shavua that she's not going to ever wash. And similarly, in the case of the kishut, in the case of uh, the adorning herself, she says, Hanaz kishut alai, the olami meskashe tayom. I'm going to prohibit adorning myself forever if I adorn myself for today. So already she's getting herself into trouble, as we mentioned uh, earlier, um, uh, with respect to this tonight. And I'm taking the shvua that I'm not going to adorn myself. So the Ron explains. What is accomplished by this double lasha? And if you look on the side of the page, just a couple of lines down from where we are right now, in the Ran last word in the line, Venera Be'enai, it seems to me the reason we have sort of the double lasha, Ra'ki Natinu Han Tan Lahani Tre Gavni, Lashmin and Rabusa, the Rabbanan Ude Rabbiosi, that it's teaching us a Chiddush both in the direction of the Chachamim who say, that this is Enoi Nefesh, and the direction of Rabbi Yossi says it's not Enoi Nefesh. The Rabbanan, the Ava Pishlo Chala Neder the Gamri, even though the Neder hasn't yet taken effect because first she has to wash once um, in order to be prohibited from washing forever. Um, nonetheless, Mefer, Mishum Abusa, the Rabbanan, Naka Milse for Tanai. So therefore, that's the Chiddush in the Tanai case. Mishum Abusa, the Rabbi Yossi, Naka Shavua. And for Rabbi Yossi, the Chiddush is that even though she's actually taking the Shavua, it goes into effect right away. I'm taking a shvua that I'm never going to wash. I'm taking a shvua that I'm never going to adorn myself, even without attaching it to a tonight below tonight. Um, despite the fact that it kicks in right away, as far as the shvua is concerned, the matzi mefer, you still can't be mefer because according to Rabbi what's the big deal? Let her never wash. Washing is not considered to be such an affliction to go without washing. What? You didn't go without washing for a few years in your life. That's not considered to be an effect. You get to go to sleep earlier. Don't take a shower. So Amalei Ravina the Ravashi. So back to the Gemara, right? So sure, this seems eminently sensible. So Ravina says to Ravashi, Hi Elu If you're going to construe the cases of the Mishnah in order to be able to get in both an im erchas and an im lo erchas, to have to say, well, I'm dealing with both a neder and a shvuas, then the Mishnah should have said. Not just Elon and Darim, but it should have said Elon and Darim Bushvuas to me by the the Mishnah. So I'm Malay, fine. So change the gear, sir. That's not so hard. It's Torah Shibal Peh. Do whatever we want. Tani Elon and Darim Bushvuas. Okay. We buy same. Or alternatively, you could say Shvuas Nami Ain and Darim. I mean, you could just say Nidarim, but Nidarim implies a Shvuas as well. It includes Shvuas. The Tanan, like for example, we have the case much earlier in the in the Masechta Daf Test. We said, somebody takes a nether, he says, like the nadarim are rishayim. So what's that? What, what is that? We said, that's nadar, the nazir of a korban or a So we said, included in that are different uh, case uh, scenarios, which include both a nether and, um, uh, and korban and a shavua, despite the fact that all the person said is kenidre uh, rishayim. Um, uh, so therefore, uh, we see that the nadarim. Subsumes uh, Shavuos uh, sh- subsumes uh, Shavuos as well. So let's get to, to the Chachamim. Um, so the Chachamim uh, seem to be of the opinion against Rabbi Yossi that Kilo Achsa, that if she doesn't wash, that's considered to be Inoi Nefesh, that's considered to be an actual uh, affliction. Um, and Rabbi Yossi disagrees, but the Chachamim really hold that way. Uh, over mini, we have a kasha on this opinion of the Rabbanan. It says, Apa pisha asa bekulon, even though um, you're not allowed to engage in any of the five inuyim, um, uh, the five you know things that when you don't engage in, it's an affliction, so you're not allowed to engage in them on Yom Kippur, eating and drinking and anointing and tashmish, you know, mechitza, 
Um, as far as Kharis is concerned, you only get Kharis in Yom Kippur if you either eat or drink a Dumalacha. In Anush Kharis and the Baoka Vishosa Vilsa Malacha Bobad, you're going to put on leather shoes, you're not going to get Kharis for that. You're going to wash on Yom Kippur, you don't get Kharis for that. We are Meski Lorachsa Ika Inoi, but if you say, according to the Chachamim, they're not washing, it's considered to be Inoi. So what does it say in Yom Kippur? We need Sam. Then any nefesh that doesn't do Enoi gets kare. So if you hold it, it's really Enoi, then you do it on Yom Kippur. Why wouldn't you get kare? So Amar Rabba, Mr. Rabba says, uh, no, I'll explain. When it comes to Nidarim, we understand that not washing is concluded based on the context of the Pshuto Shomikra, um, the context includes uh, not washing, but in Yom Kippur, the context, at least for Kari's purposes, does not include not washing. Because when it comes to Yom Kippur, what does it say? It says uh, that um, you need uh, something which is uh, nicker, uh, something which uh, the world can see um, uh, that you are afflicting yourself. It sounds like you're doing something where it's an active, um, an active manifestation of affliction. Milsa diada inuya, where it's clear anybody looking at you can see that you are afflicting yourself. So you're not eating. People could see, oh, he looks hungry. He looks thirsty. You say he doesn't look washed. Nah, hashta vechitza diada inuya with vechitza. You can't necessarily tell that a person is distressed because of the fact that they haven't washed themselves. When a person doesn't eat, so they look, you know, they're, they're, they're cranky, right? You know, they, they look kind of like run down and, and haggard because they haven't eaten. But when it comes to the Isser, or it comes to the, to, to the Chalos, to the effectiveness of Nidarim, which just says that the husband has the authority, to annul any vow of his wife that implicates Enoi Nefesh. So all that means is something that's Le'anos Nefesh, that's going to lead to Enoi. It doesn't have to be, I look at the person and I can tell that they're afflicted. Nah, it's just Milsa da'asyele de Enoi. Eventually it's going to lead to Enoi. Bechilo rachsa asyele de Enoi. And when a person doesn't wash, so it's eventually going to lead to the person uh, being uh, afflicted that they won't be able to uh, to take it anymore, even if it's not something which is like recognizable, you know, on the one day of Yom Kippur. So the Rabbi Yossi, the Rami, the Rabbi Yossi, the Rabbi Yossi. So we shouldn't uh, give Rabbi Yossi a pass. We just ask the Kasha and the Chachamim. Let's, let's ask the Kasha and Rabbi Yossi as well. But even Stephen, we have a Tosefta. Tosefta talks about if I have a spring, a spring that provides water for washing purposes and for drinking purposes to the people of a city. So if it's a question of who should get um, to, um, to take advantage of the spring first, um, you have the people of this city and the people of the next city. So the people of this city come first because we say what? The your life comes first if they're not going to drink us, so they might die. They might die of thirst, so they get to drink first. Um, what about they have to give uh, to, to drink? Uh, they have to give their animals to drink, so they'll be able to um, uh, stay alive and go out to pasture and uh, and provide milk and and do work and whatever else. So so we have a question of whether we're going to provide for our donkeys to drink or somebody else, or our camels to drink or somebody else. So behemtam kodemis the behemas acherim. Your animals come first, just like we say So the animals of your city come before providing the, the water to the animals of the next city. What about kvisas and kvisas acherim? What about washing clothing? Kvisas and kodemis the kvisas acherim. You get to wash your clothing prior to the people in the next city washing their clothing. What if they need the water to drink and you need the water to wash your clothing? So they may die if they don't drink. You're probably not going to die if you don't wash your clothing. So what comes first? So the other people to drink the water, or me to, or us to be able to use the water to wash our clothing. Um, 
So Chaya Chayim called me. Be awesome. The Tanakhama says uh, that, of course, the other people's lives for them to be able to drink the water comes prior to my ability to use the water to wash my clothing. But here we see Babiosi obviously holds that the affliction of not washing is considered to be a very great affliction. You get to wash your clothing even with the water, even prior to the other people uh, being able to use the water to drink. Babiosi, oh man, what are you talking about? My ability to use the water to wash my clothing, that comes first. So Hashakvisa, to hear the washing of clothing, I'm a Rabbi Yossi Eshbitzar. Rabbi Yossi says that even the washing of clothing, that's considered to be such a great sar if I'm not going to allow people to do that. So the washing of my very body, shouldn't that come first? So I'm re- no. In Kivisa, Alima the Rabbi Yossi. So the answer is no. Kavisa, the washing of clothing is of greater significance, believe it or not, according to Rabbi Yossi, than the washing of your body. The washing of the clothing, that takes precedence. Washing of the body, that's not such an ima. So that's not such an inui. The Amma Shmuel, is that Shmuel says, hi, if buvisa, the reisha muscular de avira, uh, that if you don't comb your hair, um, so that's not so good. It could cause uh, somebody to uh, not be able to uh, see properly. It leads to a blindness. If you don't take care of your hair, but if you have unclean clothing, so then it leads to a complete state of mental breakdown. If you don't wash your, um, your, your, your body, um, so that just leads to, um, to blisters, and blisters, says the Ran, can be treated. However, if a person has a complete mental breakdown, that's not something that can easily be treated. And therefore, Rabbi Yossi says that uh, what's the, the most serious matter uh, that needs to be taken care of is the washing of the clothing, even though the washing of the body is not enough. Oh. <laughs>